Hello my friends, finally got a package with a model from AK Interactive and inside a Toyota FJ43 pickup with Dash K on the back. I must admit that the box art is very impressive and I was impressed from the very beginning, the same as in the case of the second hardtop version. Of course in the open the box series there is a full review so if you are interested in what the content of the box look like, click the link at the top or in the description of the film. For me the biggest problem was finding the right reference materials and inspirations. The vehicle is quite popular but when we enter it in the search engine the results show more modern Toyota cars. Fortunately I found a few photos on the producer's website and in the depths of the internet. They don't all show exactly the version I'm building but they are close enough to use as a reference. In addition help was provided by a friend from Lebanon who also sent me some valuable information about this car. Thanks a lot Imad. I conducted the construction as shown in the manual. The most important thing for me was that the model parts fit very well and it was a pleasure to work on it. And I'm not saying that for AK company to make them satisfied but it was actually so. I like that in the manual we have additional descriptions explaining the construction process and any doubts. I actually started it at 10 am and finished it at 5 pm. I had a lunch break on the way so 7 hours of work on building the model from start to finish is a very good time. This is also the reason why I didn't record much footage on this process. Of course it wasn't possible to leave some elements without special treatment. This is most visible on the fenders which I gently bent with flat pliers and cut with the hobby knife to make them look damaged by uncareful driving. Besides, I also used a drill. The vehicle will be completed in rebel service somewhere in Africa or the Middle East so it cannot look like new straight from the factory. I was wondering what type of weapon set on this pickup because in many photos you can see that it's equipped with recoilless guns or various ZPU versions. In the end I decided to stay with DHK because it's made well and it makes no sense to replace it with anything else. The producer has prepared two sets of tires for us that can be used in the model. One with an aggressive and the other with a typical civilian thread. For me this is a great solution because I didn't have to think which type to use. 
I took both. So in result, one of the rear wheels has a civilian tread and so is the spare wheel. All tires have been heavily sanded to slightly wear away the shape and pattern. It's quite characteristic and I've noticed this in the pictures that the tires are almost bald, especially on older vehicles because rebel drivers in those areas don't care too much about regular replacements and the safety requirements to which we are used to. The test fitting of all the elements showed how well prepared the model is. All the main elements which are the chassis, wheels, body and seats as well as the roll bars fit perfectly. So as a result I've got what you can see on the screen right now. Before I even started working on the painting I made a small correction on one of the seats. It was enough to bend the backrest a bit and we have a more non-standard look. I think that it would be possible to even make this seat fully unfolded or folded up, but it's a bit more work. As I always do with my models, the individual elements were put on wooden sticks for easier manipulation in the case of painting. The fact that on some elements, such as on the chassis, a hole will remain, but fortunately no one will look at the chassis when the model is attached to the stand. You can cover it with a little round plug at the end and I will try to do it if I don't forget. Here a little tip on how to attach an element such as roll bars on a toothpick. Ok, when everything is ready we start with cleaning the model using model degreaser. The product evaporates quickly so we can start painting a few minutes after cleaning. I divided the elements of the vehicle into two groups. One had a body and frame and I painted them with a silver primer and the rest with black. You will know why I did it in a moment. First the black painting with a mixture of paint and satin varnish. I wanted the paint coating to have a bit of gloss although it would all be dusty after that. But ah, never mind. The seat painted on the box art is checked. I don't know how much it has to do with reality and whether there were such covers in the Toyota cars, but it looks nice. And of course I decided to paint it. I followed the drawing from the manual a bit where the producer showed the sample painting and colors, but I did a bit to my own changing the colors. A well stabilized hand is the basis in this painting because every mistake takes at least two steps back to apply corrections. I painted the second seat with sand and this way I have a bit of variety in the crew compartment. The whole body covered with a silver undercoat now is sprayed with easy chipping medium. I guess you already know what will happen next. But before I started painting this most important element I prepared the colors for the wheels. I painted the rims black and the tires dark grey and more specifically rubber black because this is the name of the color. The civilian pattern of the tires got a slightly lighter shade because I used a bit of paint that was left from painting the seat and I added it to the base color. And of course I cut off the part of the letter U in the tire producer name. And we start painting the base color, bottom and top just like the factory. I don't know if the bottom was secured with any special paint of a different shade, if so I will leave with this mistake 
if it was remained in the color of the body, then I'm on the right way. A few moments after the paint had dried, I started the destruction. A bit of water, an old brush, toothpick and tweezers did the job of creating scratches and chips all over the model. Each of these tools has a different effect on the destruction of the paint layer and creates a different type of scratch. It's all a matter of choosing the right toy. Only the most important thing. You need to know the moment when to stop. Better less done more. Looking at the chipping work we have a minute now, so as always I would like to thank my patrons for their support. Consider joining this group to get access to extra materials that I offer only for my patrons. I think you won't be disappointed and you will see what other projects I do apart from those shown on YouTube. Don't waste your chance and join now. You can find the link in the description of this movie. Because my model will be a rebel vehicle, so the paint job will be rebellious. Let's imagine that Toyota is in the hands of some militia and the driver decides to paint it a little so that it has a more military character. But he only has a yellow paint spray can on hand and some leftover of brown paint. So his painting works are early Picasso and late Cironi. Well, seriously speaking, I wanted my model to be a little different in terms of color than the one from box art that serves as model for many modelers. Of course, blue looks great on this model, but red is even better. I painted all the spots with Tamiya paints. The producer added small decal to speedometer, oil control, temperature and more. Of course, it's worth sticking them on and additionally applying a little glossy varnish. The entire exhaust pipe is painted in a metallic color. Later there will be various effects, for example a bit of rust and above all, dirt. Next I use the pigment cement for the glass of the headlights on the front and additionally stack them with strips of insulating tape. Despite its thickness it looks pretty good and I'm just wondering if these strips shouldn't be a bit longer. All of the lights at the front and rear were first painted with normal acrylic paints and then covered with transparent glossy varnishes. The effect is enough. I glued the frame to the body and added the seats. 
the model begins to take shape. There are also the roll bars that make the appearance of the pickup more sporty. The dash support was lightly painted with dark brown which gave quite a nice effect before weathering. I glued it into place right away. In the end I make some minor modification of the tires. Unfortunately there are no resin tires available yet and I don't know if they will be at all, so this solution is the simplest thing you can do to make them look more natural. For now, without glue, I will mount them on the model to take photos and film for the summary of this episode. Built, painted and ready for the weathering. I think that I realized my plan and I'm really happy with the results. Because I have no problems with building of this kit, I was thinking about making quite a big base with some other models, but my wife showed me the list of my next builds and... you know. In the next episode I will do weathering, a figure and a little stand, yep, you heard it correctly, a little stand to present the model in an interesting way. I already have an idea and I think I can do something easy and rare at the same time. I hope you enjoyed this process and my work will be useful for someone who is going to build this kit. Thank you for watching this episode. If you like this channel and want to support, please subscribe it, like and write a comment. That's all for today, see you next time, cheers!